Damn, uh, did y'all get a mic check off of Jaren? Yeah. Okay. It's in my C in your cart. Go C. My Q. It stinks. Trash piles up at a local apartment Booster complex. Booster audience. And it might not be going anywhere for a while. Why, well, And as the cost of college continues to rise, we look at the state of financial aid for McNeese students. Why, well, Plus, a fire almost cost them from everything. Seeing. They say Coming out center. Are, and they help them recover. Now they're returning the favor. 70s at 6 starts now. Go see. Now, in high definition, this is Standard by on cam. And my key, Cynthia. Good evening. It's a smelly situation oh, at center. One Lake Charles apartment complex. Out. Stand by it's from weeks since the last in. trash pickup, and the trash is piling up. And it could be weeks before the trash and the smell are gone. KPL sees Jaren Jordan see. is standing by with Stand more. Stand by Jaren. My cue. That's right, Cynthia. Well, when you don't yes. pay your bills, services yes. get cut off. Very nice. The same goes for the owners of apartment complexes. A is clear. Now hundreds Stand of residents are left one. with mounds of accumulating garbage. Yeah, These are the photos that oh, were first shared in the news by like West Point Pines resident Nehemiah Zeta. Each photo shows a bit <laughs> problem like at the Lake Charles apartment complex owned by a Robert Desideer of Cross Country Management. Excessive what amounts of garbage move? overflowing yeah, out of waste pits. On like site, the same visuals. I, I a problem love ludicrous. I don't know why, but I do. Clarence LaChapelle doesn't live in Whispering Pines, but his daughter has for the past 17 years. He says that garbage hasn't been picked up in weeks. And all the trash was blown down here the other day. Down? It's in. I just understood. I thought you were going to say down. Waste management confirmed that okay. issue with Seven News. According to sales manager Brandy Swallow, the last payment made by Desidere was on November 7, 2012. Because it wasn't paid in full and still held a $6,000 balance, cutoff notices started in early December. As of the 1st of February, service uh, less than a minute now, like that, is the out will come back to the monitor and the go to center nonsense, yeah. Posted to the account. I'm 62 years old. I, I don't see a whole lot of things, you know. I've never seen something like this. It, it's just hard to get something done. How did they let him but talking more build up to a $10,000 bill? But other residents who didn't want to go on camera, the garbage issue is just one That's of many much. on a lengthy list of grievances. Seems like they would have stopped it at a thousand. <laughs> just pay it already. Thirty. They've been having problems. You know, they actually get something done and never get done. Residents say a new property manager just took 15. the reins this week, but La Chapelle says with so many different managers rotating through the complex like a revolving 10. door, he's lost hope that any change for the better Stand will be made down. for his daughter's situation. People here just don't want to do nothing. You know, all of them are good. My cue. Now, Waste Management apologizes to the residents that are left with the short end of the stick in this situation. Although they provided free pickup service for about two months for the past due property, Swallow says they still have a business to run. As for when that trash should be picked up, she says that around the 1st of March, the contract will officially be canceled and the bins completely removed from the property. Desideer has yet to return our calls for comment. At your service, so Jordan, Jordan, KPLC 7 News. Mike Kuhn. A deal Spot could be made with Marty Gore and Gordon on at tonight's Lake Charles City Council meeting. The Video's city up. council is set to vote on selling we'll the Harris property for to Marty Gore Boardwalk for $4.4 million. Marty Gras Boardwalk is proposing a multi-million dollar mixed-use development with an outside Sounds amphitheater. Good. However, there are several concerns by the council, including a sound issue. The council is also expected to vote on having a professional acoustical study done on the proposed project. We'll have more tonight Sima at 10 on 70s Nightcast. There is a severe weather threat for tomorrow. One on we'll be watching the developing situation and joins us now with the latest. Yes, Cynthia, certainly kind of a developing situation and something that's going to take One's another up. 12 to 18 hours or so to fully develop and here's the reason why i want to show you the radar up. and satellite on a wide we'll view we'll come back to the three and two then we'll go out. to key on the system out here that is going to move to the east very rapidly overnight tonight and bring us the potential at least for some strong to severe thunderstorms here in southwest louisiana it looks like a mascot was attacking drew a second ago <laughs> hours. but no threat tonight there's nothing to worry about this evening and that is good news. Temperatures already back down to the 50s, 55, the Ritter, as well as Fort Polk and Oakdale. And everybody might be thinking it's awfully cool for severe weather. And yes, it is right now, but we will see a warm up so uh, three. tomorrow morning. And some good news we mentioned at 5 o'clock the three is radar up. was going some under, I'm going, I'm having some. Going back to Keaton, Cynthia.
All right, good news. Thanks a lot, Wade. She's up. February is Going Financial Aid Jenna Awareness three. Month, and McNeese is reminding its students that it's not too late to receive help. KPLC's Olivia Vidal attended Financial Aid Awareness Day at the university and has more on what students and parents should know. In three. Show me the money. This is a minute, the 37 standard out key. We will come back. Uh, we'll go to a full screen and then come back key. You're going to animate Awareness that full screen. Day, students yeah. learned more about how to First pay for college. Clear. And for some students, it's a huge in? help. And if I didn't have it, I would not be able to go to school. Or if I did, I'd have to work a few jobs. The Pell Grant, it covered in. all my books and all my classes. Down. And it was like just enough. I mean, it was a lot. Like college, college costs a lot. It would have took me like a long time to get that money in. I wouldn't have had anything, but I'm, I'm thankful for that. So if I keep my grades up, Ten. I get rewarded for that. And so now it's helping Down. me for college. Financial aid comes in all forms, not One minute. just loans, such as grants and scholarships. The pre-application and processing for financial aid is still the same, according to Assistant Director of Financial Aid, Janet Delaney. But there are some changes that may impact the cost for an education. Well, unfortunately, with the budget cuts that we're facing, there have been uh, increases to tuition, and the students have had to see... Uh, Increases in other things such as housing, uh, meal plans, and things 30. like that. Delane says the Office of Financial Aid yeah. wants students to realize they're there to provide help and information. A lot of people think that they can't get any financial aid because of their income or their parents' income. And actually, there is financial aid available for everyone. You never know what you can be awarded. 15. Grants you can be eligible for, loans. Very helpful. Anyone can apply. 10. And it's, uh, Stand by it's full screen. Need by need basis, but it's, yeah, if you apply. Five. Doesn't hurt. At your service in Lake Charles, Olivia Vidal, KPLC 7 News. Go D. My Q. The Office of Financial Aid at McNeese is open from 7.45 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. and offers help with financial aid applications. Yeah. Take the it office out. is already working on helping students for then the fall semester, your key on air. but students can still apply still for financial aid for the current semester and the summer. Advance your key. Have you ever thought about adopting? You got a there video are thousands out of, of children in foster care waiting for some loving family to open up their hearts and homes to them. Children Videos just up. like four-year-old Deontay. He's our uh, we'll go to another Disney full screen, you're keyed in. Deontay is a bright boy who loves to play, he loves coloring, and his foster mom yeah, says one of his favorite things is cuddling Aww, up his cute. bedtime story. So if you have plenty of books and lots of love to give, Stand my full we'll screen. look into giving this child a permanent home that he so desperately needs. Go full screen. The of children and We're going go to go come back out to video out of two for the bump of the brain. You can make all the difference in a young Take it out. child like Deontay's life. Coming up next, a fire Down. changed their lives. Then the Salvation Army stand by one on three. And now they're three. giving back, and you can Ten. help too. That story is seventy. Go on. Continue. And you're up in three, two, one. Fade dig out. I like the camera in the shot. That's cool. Good job, guys. Good block. Fifteen. Somebody sound from C. Ten. Five, four, three, two, one. Go C. Stand by Cynthia. My Q key. The empty bowl fundraiser for the Salvation Army refers to those who have little Beautiful. or nothing. Tonight we meet a, a local out. couple whose bowl seem nearly empty after Stand a bad package fire, from one. But the Salvation Army helped to fill it. KPLC's Teresa Schmidt reports now they're doing their part to give back. And one. On most mornings, the minute 48 you can find standard King Simpson slaving over the stove, okay. preparing food for those who will come to eat at their restaurant, the lunch box. We'll come back keyed for the time. Broad Street. But we'll just go to last August, C. their happy family was devastated when their home like was you hit it late or early. early. The Salvation um, Army stepped up. The house was still, down. you know, smoking, Ten. and I couldn't believe they were down. right there. You know, taking our information and giving us a card to, to help us because, you know, we did lose everything, you know. But just to see yeah. them out there Ten. with such a quick response, Ten. it was uh, really eye-opening and it helped me to understand the good that they do. And I swore to myself One minute. that I would definitely want to give back to them because they were right there for us when we needed them. The Simpsons are among local chefs preparing their favorite soups 
for the Empty Bowl fundraiser. The soup that we're going to make is Loretta's famous <laughs> beef and vegetable soup. The whole family gets Try excited when she makes it. In fact, my sister tried to imitate it just recently. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody loves the soup. How did your sister do when she tried to imitate it? No comment. <laughs> no, I want to be modest, but it's a good soup. You know, it's one of my best recipes. The Salvation Army helps thousands of families each year with emergency meals, housing, clothes, and even rent and utilities for a few. Gentlemen that are down on their Since. luck. Uh, they help them. They have overnight Some. accommodations for them for a temporary basis. They help them get an account, savings Ten. account open. Services that sometimes provide a lifeline for those in crisis. At your service, Teresa Schmidt, KPLC 7 News. And Mike Houston, then. And to find out more about Ten. the Empty Bowl fundraiser on March 14th and what the Salvation Army Semi -sound from C. log on to KPLCTV.com. Go see. New tonight on Minecast at 10, the latest dance Videos plays up. that's sweeping the nation hit me today in a uh, big stem way. Stem from we'll three. The Harlem Shake Cowboy Style. Plus, and three. aromatherapy has been a proven stress reliever for humans, but what about for horses? Local researchers put that question to the in a very unique research project. And my cues. All that coming up tonight, but for now we're going to turn it over to Wade Hampton for our web. Stay your part, stem at 30. Glad to report that the Lake Charles National Weather Service radar is back up and working. Not that I need to show you anything on it just yet. Good news tonight, no issues, but tomorrow I have a feeling we're going to be using this a lot brain. to track rain and thunderstorms. Your forecast coming up after this. So is mine. And fade. Did he just change his graphic? Yeah, the end. Oh. I can barely hear you talk loud. Fifteen. Ten. Five. Four. Three. Two. One, go see. Now your pinpoint forecast with Demo Chief Wayne. Meteorologist Wade Hampton. Mikey Wayne. Well, good evening to you. Yesterday, is I clear. That we were in a progressive weather pattern then, which meant that a changes clear. came very quickly. Yesterday, of course, was a beautiful day. Today is that transition day from that beautiful beauty to not so nice weather coming in for tomorrow. Tonight's going to be fairly cloudy and also rather breezy. I do not expect the wind to calm down a whole lot tonight, so don't be surprised to hear the wind this evening. But the good news, no severe storms tonight. There's nothing to worry about. So as you're going to bed this evening, you don't have to worry about any thunderstorms waking you up tonight. Thankfully, they're going to come through during the day tomorrow. Now, that is a double-edged sword. It is good because more of us are awake and we don't have to worry about folks sleeping through the thunderstorms, but it is also bad because it comes through during the day when the daytime heating is here as well. And that could factor into those storms. We'll watch that potential. Then I do expect some rain to linger into Friday as well. The severe potential will be gone by then, but more some of the rain certainly could still be around. The, east. the good news, this is out of here by tomorrow evening. Here's what I expect as far as some of the impacts are concerned. I think damaging winds in those thunderstorms themselves are probably going to be the biggest issues. Maybe an isolated tornado or two or hail. Of course, we'll continue to keep you posted on any issues that may develop tomorrow with respect to severe weather. Regardless, rain chance Cameras tomorrow clear. at 90 Stem percent. Three and a two. And quite a few of those will be thunderstorms, and we're going to keep our fingers crossed that we miss up on the worst three, of this, to get the like we the always do. And again, a good way to uh, keep up cam. on things, of course, is tuning in They're to KPLC, but if you're going to be you want the television, a center shot of her for this toss? The weather app right here on this iPad, and go and check See, we should have just did a double box. Quick note, Linda Ritter, we were supposed to come tomorrow. We're going to have to postpone that, obviously, because of the weather. We'll make it up, though, kind of. Stand so by two. Right, we'll be back out there yes, later. Will. All right, thanks for coming. Time up. for sports, and Drew Shirley Stand is by one line. happy man tonight. Drew, my cue, Drew. Sneaking your heart. Stand the by your brain. Man in America, because the Harlem Globetrotters are in town. <laughs> we'll have a live interview with Flight Time Lang. I told him to do this. It's coming up next in sports. Kills Mike Payne. Thank God I didn't take the banner. Yeah, right.
15. That shot's really tight. 10. Yeah. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go see. They don't have to be setting sports with Jim Shirley. Local first. Mike, you. All right. Here I am. Drew Shirley live at the Lake Charles Civic Center. The Harlem Globetrotters are in town. It is a huge thrill for me. I've been a fan of the Globetrotters since I was a kid. I'm joined by Flight Time Lang. Who's He's here? going to bring the show to Lake Charles tonight. How are you tonight? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm um, happy to be here. The arena's filling up pretty nice. People still got time to make it out. I think we got about 40 minutes so before tip-off, so everybody hurry up and come on down. Check us out. Now, how did you become a Globetrotter in the first place? Well, the Globetrotters, they actually knew me from winning the college dunk contest at the Final Four back in 1998, a long time ago. Okay. But um, I've been with the team now for 14 years, and I've been to over 90 countries. Been here several times. It's always nice to be back in Louisiana. I actually live in Boulder City, so got a few people here tonight. That's great. Now, what's your favorite part about being a Harlem Globetrotter? My favorite part is actually traveling the world. You know, I've been to over 90 different countries. I've had an opportunity to do a bunch of different television shows. I mean, I did The Amazing Race twice. Appeared on The Bachelorette, Are You Smart in the Fifth Grader? Price is Right, you name it. You might see me there. Now, I'm actually going to suit up with a global select tonight. Stand by on cam. What should I expect? What tips do you have for someone who's competing against the Harlem Globe? The tip is, um, I'm glad you signed the waiver because we can do whatever we want to do to you for however amount of time we decide to keep you out there. Well, that's, uh, that's a little frightening. How am I going to survive then? We, we won't kill you. We'll, we'll make sure you survive. We're we'll going to go to video out of two nights. Right. We'll, make, we'll make sure the people have fun with you as well. All right. Flight time laying in the Harlem Globetrotters, just about 30 minutes away from tip off at the Lake Charles Civic Center. Now, there's some other things going on. The Video's boys' up. basketball playoffs are underway. We had Washington Marion and Wasman last night. And early on, We're gonna it was Jalen Jackson with screen. the steal going the other way. He gets the layup. He was <clears throat> Is up by three at that point. We're in the second quarter now. Christopher Smith for three. That's no good, but Dedrick Richmond sticks it back. Washington Marion takes the lead. More from the Indians. Yeah, Deontay Dixon to DeMond De La Husse over to Jackson. And the Indians go on Ten. to win. 71 to 61. A lot full of disappointment up. last night, but a few teams managed to win. Pickering beat St. Mary 72 52. And Rosebine sweep by Manny. 56-55. In Class B was Fairview over Hosanna we'll come back to 48 and Lacassine over Episcopal 72-21. In Class C, Reeves was a 10-point winner over Give Gifford a lot, Coleman 59-49 and Hackberry beat Georgetown 49-33. And now it is time for our from sports three. person of the week and here's Seth Lewis. Three. The Seven Sports Billy Navar Sports Person of the Week. This is 23 this seconds. Of the week is no. Caitlin Bagot of the McNeese State Women's Basketball Team. Caitlin became the Cowboys so, all time leader. The week is the out cue. We're going to go to a full screen. Victory over Southeastern Tuesday. The senior also moved to the third come back to live. with a game high of 24 points. Congratulations to Caitlin Bagot. Stand by Mike. Sports Person of the Week. And my cue. All right, and right now the McNeese softball ladies are underway against Louisiana Lafayette over at Cargirl Stadium. We'll have highlights of that one tonight at 10. But most importantly, we have camp. the Harlem Globetrotters right here on at Lake Charles Center. We do have a I'm slot out of one for the bomb. I can't even contain my excitement, Cynthia. It's going to be very exciting. We'll show you what happened. And if I survived, tonight at 10. And Mikey, Cynthia. All right, thanks, Drew. Have fun out there. Coming up next, Wade is back with another shift from one. forecast. And son of one. They're called the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association, and we'll talk about it in the hometown Patriot. And Faye, take it. Time's right. Good job. Good job. Yay. Good See, job. that bump back, we totally yeah, needed a double box. Sorry, after the weather? No, 40-15. 40-15? After, after, after the tag, yes. 4-0, yeah. All right, so wait. 40-15 after the tag. And you have a closing shot. 30. We will have a closing shot of the Globe Trotters. Hopefully. Send my song from scene. Fifteen. Ten. Five, four, three, two, one. Go see. Really? 
Mike Hume. Oh, We're honoring pretty. a local veterans organization for their role in helping to improve the lives of those soldiers returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. You're clear. As KPLC's John one. Bridges tells us, this group is holding an upcoming motorcycle ride to raise money for those soldiers. And one. Like many veterans returning yeah. from Afghanistan and Iraq, Billy yeah. Miller is having yeah, to adjust recording. to civilian it's life it's again. Nobody Here back it. at home, Miller served with an MP and if they do, I'm and just relates well like with other who, combat who's veterans. Running Chiron, totally <laughs> racist. <laughs> I'm one of those people that don't like her. Really? But uh, they, they, say say to. <clears throat> they share a lot of what I went through, so it's a lot different than you know hearing a therapist say, "You got to change this in your life." It's not about changing your life; it's about being around people you can trust. That's the purpose of the Combat Motorcycle Veterans Association. It's a charitable motorcycle organization. We, uh, our motto is Vet Helping one that's Vets. A banner, Keith, we uh, if do you a lot of poker runs and of raising of funds to benefit uh, veterans that need. Yeah, then she the group didn't is seem holding very a motorcycle billion. run Saturday, March 16th, to help out Army Specialist Zach Parker, who became a triple amputee after being wounded last year in Afghanistan. Other proceeds will help homeless veterans oh, at the City of Refuge Shelter in Benton. It's, it's a charitable motorcycle it's organization. We, our motto is Vets Helping mm -hmm. Vets. We uh, do a lot of poker runs and we'll raising of funds to then benefit we'll to two, uh, veterans that need help. The motorcycle run the begins at Jimbo's truck stop in Lake Charles and 100 miles later ends up in Sulphur at Five Beatbox. seconds. Stand by. At your service, John Bridges, KPLC 7 News. And Mikey Cynthia. The combat vets poke a run to Stand benefit local wounded warrior Zach Parker and the City of Refuge Shelter for Homeless Veterans will be held Saturday, March 16th. For information, call Denise at 337-532-4271. And three is up. Maybe we should move the last on that event. All right, weather-wise, obviously tomorrow, some strong and severe thunderstorms will look at least possible across the area. We'll be keeping our fingers uh, crossed on that it doesn't get that bad. And, of course, we'll be on cool. top of things throughout the day tomorrow. Oh, we're, we're going to go to live. Rain chance at 90%. Looks like the best time period for this to come yeah, through is going to be on. late morning but through the afternoon hours. And, again, we were thinking crazy. we were going to be able to make it to Walgreens and Ritter tomorrow They're for another one of our weather radio events. But, obviously, the weather dictates 30. we must stay it's here. So website. we'll make that up. We'll be coming to you probably in another couple of weeks or so. And again, do want to remind you as well, for Radar Anytime, go and check out our app or on the website as well. All right. Thank you, Wade. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back here tonight at 10 for Nightcast. Website's Or anytime online live and on your mobile you device, kplctv.com. Thanks for joining us and have a great evening. Live is up. 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Fade, take it. That was a good show. Woo! There it goes. No yelling. We like wolves.